Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. This is the second part of my meter sub-series of my electrical series. Today we're going to actually do a little lab. We're going to use this meter and another meter to do interesting things. So today we're going to use our meters to measure some things. Well, we need electricity, and the easiest way to get electricity is a battery. This is a lead acid battery. Uh, it's an AGM. It's very much like what you might have in your boat if you don't have lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, if you have lithium iron phosphate batteries, and if, in my opinion, you're doing it correctly, you've got one of my bank managers, you still have these in your boat. So, first thing, let's just check how many volts are across the terminal. So I can take my meter and I put it in voltage mode and on this meter I have to select DC voltage and I touch the probes to the two terminals. And what do I get? I get 12.69 volts. That means the electrical potential across those terminals right now is 12.69 volts. For my other videos you know what that means but it basically that's the amount of push available. If I put the meter on backwards, what do I get? As you might guess, I get negative 12.69 volts. Don't worry, this won't hurt the meter in the least. It's a good way to tell if you have two wires, which is positive, which is negative. Just hook it up. But notice there's always a possibility of a little negative sign there. And if you see the negative sign, that means you have the device hooked up backwards, or at least you know that negative is higher than positive for electrical potential. Voltage isn't really like just a magical thing that exists. It's always the difference between two places. So all we can really say is the electrical potential between that terminal and that terminal is 12.6. It's kind of the job of a battery to keep those potentials different so you can have a flow of electrons through the rest of the circuit. What else can we check? Well, we can measure amperage. Amperage is the flow of power through a circuit. So let me take this little light bulb and let me hook it up to the battery. And we get light. So I'm going to put this in amp mode. I'm going to switch it to DC mode. Notice these clamp-on meters seldom go right to zero. There's a way of recalibrating them and you want to do that every time to get it to zero. Then I'm going to clamp the meter on one of the wires and finish the circuit. Turn on the light. If you look at the meter, try to make it not upside down for you, you see 0.22 amps. Two tenths of an amp. That's what this light bulb is drawing out of this battery. Two tenths of an amp. That's a pretty easy test to do. And these clamp-on meters are great because if you wanted to know what your alternator is putting out, you can just clamp this right on the great big wire. Or if you want to know what's coming out of your battery, you can clamp right onto that and you can get a reading up into the hundreds of amps. I think this one goes to like 400 amps, um, which is a lot of power. So if you choose to use this other kind of meter that doesn't have a clamp on, they work a little differently. You have to move the terminal probe from the positive side over to the appropriate other side, in this case the 10 amp side. You have to make sure you never expose the meter to more than what it's rated for, more than 10 amps. Where this one can go to 400, this one uh, 10 amps or you'll blow a fuse inside. Then you have to take your circuit apart. You have to put the meter within your circuit. So the power actually runs through the meter and back out. This is why you can't put too much power through it. That meter is only so big. What it's doing is going through something called a shunt. And a shunt is a known low resistance. And when power goes through a resistor, there's a voltage drop. You can look at the earlier videos for that in depth. But that voltage drop is a very accurate way to know how much current is being drawn across the shunt. So in this case, it says, 0 0.204, 0 0.205 um, amps are flowing through this. This method is way more accurate than these clamp-on methods, but usually on a boat, this is plenty of accuracy for your needs. 
So um, you can go either way you want, but because of the ease and the convenience for amps, I would go this way. Third thing, it's nice to know how much resistance is in a circuit. So this is a resistor. This is a six ohm resistor. Uh, this particular one can handle 50 watts kind of continuously if you have a proper mounting. And uh, let's take a little look at this and see what the amp meter says is the resistance. So I'm going to set it for ohms. I will put it in the right mode that this meter likes to be in. I think I'll put it right here. I think you'll be able to see it pretty well there. And then I'm going to touch my meter to the two probes. Now, if I just grab this with my hands, not touching anything else, you see the, the resistance number reads. It's mega ohms, but or even kilo ohms. It's reading the power that can travel through my body. It's not a lot. It's very, very little current, but it is there. So if you were to grab a resistor with your hands on it, you'd be measuring both the path through the resistor and the path through my body. So when you're doing ohms, you're allowed to squeeze one of them, but the other one you have to use with the insulators. And what do we get? We get six ohms, pretty spot on, which is great because this is a six ohm resistor and it's trying to be spot on. The other thing that resistors are good at is holding that six ohms when the temperature changes. I have mentioned before that you take a piece of copper wire, the three things that affect its resistance is the size of the wire, the length of the wire, and the temperature of the wire. When things get hot, Copper in particular, the resistance goes up quite a bit, but this doesn't. This has um, magic inside, it's all I'll say now, and this is pretty uh, sure to be six ohms. So we've got a resistor, we've tested that it's a six ohm resistor. We read on the label that it's a six ohm resistor. Now let's put this in a circuit. So I'm gonna hook it up here. I don't wanna hook it up too long because Remember the power equation, there's current going through this, whatever current squared in uh, amps is going through this times six will be the amount of power that's being dissipated. That will get this hot. This thing can handle a lot of heat, but honestly, I don't want to touch it when it starts getting hot. So we're going to do that. Now I've taken this clamp on meter. I have uh, set it for DC amps and I've calibrated it to zero. So let me put this on here. We've got current flowing through the resistor now and I'm going to put the meter in place. And what do we see? 2.07 amps. 2.07 amps going through the, through the circuit. And yeah, still doing okay, but it's, I feel it warming up in my hand. So let me turn this off. Oh, wait, one more thing. We can't do this yet because we knew the electrical potential of the battery. But as you know, when you take a load on a battery, the voltage goes down because you know, electrons are flowing and things are being pulled downward. So I'm going to set this for DC voltage, hook my little circuit back together and check the actual voltage that's being delivered to the battery, uh, to the circuit. And it's 12.22 going down, as you can see, because I'm taking power out of the battery, but we'll say 12.2. So let's do a little math with those numbers. Whenever you're going to do math, whenever you're going to use Ohm's law, whenever you're going to make that useful to you, write on a piece of paper, V, I, R, put them in a triangle. Put the uh, V at the top because it's pointy like the top of a triangle. So we've got volts equals amps times ohms. Well, let's say we want to know how many amps are flowing through this circuit. We measured it at 0.2, but let's say we didn't know. Well, we know the resistance and we know the voltage. So we take 12.2 divide because it's below by six and what do we get? Well, I never trust my math, especially when I'm on video. So 12.2 divided by six and we get 2.0333. We get our two amps. That's what we read. That's good. That means physics works. Let's try this one more time. I want to show you this other time because sometimes there's other things that happen in a circuit that aren't obvious. So I take this light bulb. I'm going to go back to ohms to read its resistance. I'm going to touch my probes on here. I find both ends of the wire. 
And what do I get? I get a resistance across my light bulb circuit, wires and all, of 5.4 ohms. Okay? I know that the battery will put out a voltage, 12.2, we just measured. Um, I should be able to do the same thing and calculate the current that this light bulb will use. Okay, so I have 12.2 volts. I'll divide by the 5.4, and it tells me that 2.25 amps should go through this circuit. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what we get. And put the meter back in DC amps mode. Calibrate it to zero. I'm going to take my uh, circuit and put it together. There's the light lighting up. I'll clamp my meter onto the circuit and I get 0.2 amps. What the heck? That's not two, that's a tenth of it. What's happening? I wanted to show you that because usually it happens with light bulbs, but it can really confuse people trying to figure out what's going on. If you use your light, a light bulb as your load, an incandescent light bulb, here's the deal. That's a little piece of wire. How an incandescent light bulb works is current goes through it, it gets hot, back to the power equation, it gets really hot, it gets hot enough that the color of that heat is white light. Um, well, what happens when you make wire hot? The resistance goes up. So in this case, the resistance goes up an awful lot. And when the resistance goes up, because of the math, the amps go down. So I just wanted to show you that that can happen. We can actually calculate the resistance that this light bulb has while it's on, which is different than the resistance it has while it's off. So if we want to figure out the resistance of a light bulb when it's on, when it's actually on and hot, how could we do that? That's weird because it's in the circuit. We can't probe uh, um, an amp meter on a flowing circuit because the battery will just hurt our amp meter. So what we do, we take the 12.2 volts. Well, we get to divide that by the current. We know the current is 0.2 and that tells us right out there's 60 ohms in that light bulb when it's on. Isn't that kind of neat? You can use Ohm's Law to figure out things you can't normally know. In essence, that's what um, any function in this device other than the actual voltmeter is doing. It's using Ohm's Law, it's using various other physics effects, and it's figuring out what's going on. Um, these are just neat little creations, ni nice things to have. So what else? Let's talk a little about safety. This is not a safety video. I am not a safety instructor. Uh, you, if you're really worried about what you're doing or you're gonna even think about using these on thousand volt circuits or something like that, go elsewhere. But for basic safety of your meter, at 12 volts, you kinda can't get hurt. You can touch these with your finger. You can make a short circuit through your flesh. It's not gonna do anything. 24 volts, maybe if you were wet. 48 volts, don't do it. You're gonna feel it, it's not good. And of course, we all know about 110 and up. That gets real scary and can kill you real fast. I certainly wouldn't touch, even though it's DC, I don't touch 48 volts on purpose. Gotta say I've done it. Um, the meter, well, if you're using one of these style meters or these style meters and you're reading voltage, no problem, you can basically shove the probes anywhere um, within the limit of what the meter can handle and it's not gonna hurt the meter any, it's gonna give you a reading. If you set it for um, amps, and this is a clamp-on meter, you can clamp on to almost anything. Uh, it won't hurt the meter to get too much power through it within reason, but it um, won't read beyond what it can read. This kind of meter, if you were to uh, run too much power through, more than it's rated, it's always clearly marked right there, 10 amps on this case. You will either burn out the shunt, or in the case of this one, it has a fuse, you'll burn out the fuse first. So um, pay heed to that. Now, when you set it for ohms, this one's just easy for me to hold. When you set it for ohms, you can only test a circuit that's separate from other things. Because when you set it for ohms, the internal meter is actually putting power out through the circuit and measuring the losses. If you were to touch this set for ohms to your battery, bad things could happen. 
Um, I think most modern meters just will fault out and, and survive it. Older meters really won't have a nice day, but just don't do it. It's bad practice, and at the very least, you might hear about internal resistance of a battery, and you might want to do that to find No, It won't answer your question. It might just hurt your meter. How you do the internal resistance calculation of a battery is very much like how we did it for the light bulb. You have to have it in a live circuit. You take the information you know, and you calculate back. And that internal resistance number, if you're a lead guy, you're probably wondering why am I even saying it? It's a big thing for lithium cells. I hope you're all much more comfortable with how to use an amp meter now or a multimeter now. Um, this is a really useful tool. If you just play around with it, not only will you get better at using it and solving your problems, but you kind of automatically get more proficient at the math behind it because you see the interrelations. I highly recommend you have one aboard your boat, even if you don't know how to use one now. Get one, you will need it eventually, or maybe somebody like me might come over for drinks and I can solve a problem for you if you have the tool I need. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe. I hope you go back and watch this whole series. Please recommend the series to other people if uh, you know anybody that could benefit from it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Bye from Temptress.